Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe the electrophilic addition of a halogen molecule to an alkene. You should then be able to describe how to test for unsaturated molecules using bromine water. In the last couple of videos we looked at the electrophilic addition of a hydrogen halide molecule to alkenes. We looked at the addition of hydrogen bromide but this also applies to hydrogen chloride and hydrogen iodide. Because halogen atoms are more electronegative than hydrogen, hydrogen halide molecules have a permanent dipole. In the first stage of this reaction, the pair of electrons in the pi bond of the alkene are attracted to the positive hydrogen atom of the hydrogen bromide. And in this case, the positive hydrogen atom is acting as an electrophile. The pair of electrons from the alkene now forms a covalent bond to the hydrogen atom. At the end of this stage, we've formed a carbocation intermediate with a positive charge on a carbon atom. We've also formed a bromide ion. In the second stage, the electron pair on the bromide ion are now attracted to the positive carbon atom, forming a covalent bond. And we've now made our product, which in this case is bromoethane. Scientists call this reaction mechanism electrophilic addition. In this video, we're going to look at the reaction between an alkene and a halogen molecule. I'm showing you here the equation for the reaction between ethene and bromine, but I should point out that we'd see a similar reaction with other alkenes and other halogens. In this reaction, the halogen molecule adds across the double bond. This is another example of electrophilic addition, but as you'll see the mechanism is slightly different to the one we've seen before. And that difference is due to the fact that halogen molecules do not have a permanent dipole. So let's take a look at the mechanism, and again I'd recommend that you learn it. We look at the mechanism for the reaction between ethene and bromine, but this also applies to other alkenes and other halogens. In the first stage of the reaction, the bromine molecule approaches the ethene molecule. As we've said, the bromine molecule does not have a permanent dipole. However, the double bond of the alkene is a region of high electron density, and this high electron density repels the electron pair of the covalent bond in the bromine molecule, and this means that the bromine molecule now has an induced dipole. In stage 2, the pair of electrons in the pi bond of the alkene are attracted to the positive bromine, so in this case the positive bromine is acting as an electrophile. The electron pair now forms a covalent bond to this bromine atom. At the same time, the covalent bond in the bromine molecule now breaks, and the pair of electrons move on to the other bromine atom. When a covalent bond breaks like this, with both electrons going to the same atom, scientists call this heterolytic fission. So at the end of stage 2, we've got a carbocation intermediate and a bromide ion. In stage 3, the electron pair on the bromide ion are attracted to the positive carbon atom in the carbocation intermediate. This electron pair now forms a covalent bond, and we have our final product. In this case, the product is 1,2-dibromoethane. Notice that in this reaction, the halogen molecule adds across the double bond. This means that the two halogen atoms end up on two adjacent carbon atoms. We cannot get both halogen atoms on the same carbon atom. Now you'll notice that there are two key differences between adding a halogen to an alkene and adding a hydrogen halide to an alkene. Firstly, hydrogen halide molecules have a permanent dipole, whereas in halogen molecules the dipole is induced. Secondly, when we add a hydrogen halide to an asymmetric alkene, we make a major and a minor product. However, when we add a halogen to an asymmetric alkene, we only make one product. For example, if we add bromine to butanoin, we can only make 1,2-dibromobutane. OK, now we can use the reaction with a halogen to test for the presence of an unsaturated molecule such as an alkene. To do this we use bromine water, which has an orange-brown colour. To test if a substance is unsaturated, we add drops of bromine water and gently shake the test tube. If our substance is unsaturated, then the bromine will add across the double bond, and the product of the reaction will be colourless. So we'll see the orange bromine water decolorize. However, if our test substance is saturated, then the bromine will not react, and the bromine water will remain orange. OK, so hopefully now you can describe the electrophilic addition of a halogen molecule to an alkene, and describe how to test for the presence of an unsaturated molecule. 